Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 5 of All the Mods 10 Mythbusting, and today we are going to be finding what the best inductor is, among some other things. But before we get into that, I need to make some amendments in regards to my optimized turbine tutorial. So right in front of me, you can see the optimized turbine that I made the tutorial for. It is outputting 62.91 million FE per tick, uh, but this is actually not completely optimized, and I'll show you why. This right here is the exact same setup as before, except with two less rows of blades. And as you can see, it is producing 62.94 million FE per tick, so that's a bit better than the previous one. So once I knew that you could get rid of two of the blades and get more output, I decided to try to uh, shrink this down a bit by removing those two shafts and making it a bit shorter. And that's what this one is. You can see it's two blocks lower. Uh, but weirdly enough, even though there's less turbine shaft, which you would think would make it easier for it to spin, uh, it actually produces less output, 62.93 uh, million FE per tick compared to 62.94 uh, and you can see the RPM is also a tiny bit less as well and I have no idea why that is uh, you'd think that it would be the opposite you'd think this would be faster but no so I don't know why that is I don't know if it's a bug I don't know if it's intended uh, maybe someone can look into the code and tell me what's going on there so now thinking that maybe adding more shafts but no blades increases output I built this guy right here uh, you can see the same number of blades as this one and that one, but uh, two blocks taller, so two blocks more of shaft. Uh, but if we check, you can see it is producing the same uh, FE per tick, roughly, uh, but the RPM is actually 0 0.01 lower than this one over here. So yeah, so it seems like maybe there's just some teeny tiny little sweet spot middle ground. Uh, but yeah, I, again, you would think, based on a physics perspective, that getting rid of the shaft would allow it to spin faster because less things to spin, but yeah, don't know what's happening there. Uh, basically the gist of it, that one's technically the best, this one's technically the worst, this one's technically the second best, uh, but I think I'm going to make a tutorial on this one because it is far smaller than the other ones and only sacrifices a tiny, tiny percentage of output per tick. And now I need to immediately correct myself because as I just finished recording that last segment, I stumbled upon this design right here. So this one is one block even shorter than that small one over there, uh, but it produces the exact same amount of FE per tick. So yeah, I think I'm actually going to make a tutorial on this one. It's the smallest and you only lose 0 0.01 million FE per tick, which I think is justified for how much smaller it is. There was one more design I tested, which is this one right here. So really all it is is just doubling the amount of insanite blocks. So instead of 16 insanite blocks, we have 32 insanite blocks. And you can see it does actually produce more. So instead of spinning at 1800 RPM, we are at 900 RPM. And as you can see here, uh, you want your rotors to be either at 900 or 1800 RPM. And it does produce a tiny bit more at million FE per tick, so 63.01 million FE per tick compared to 62.94 million or 62.93 million. Uh, but Insanite is very expensive, and I don't think it's worth doubling the amount of Insanite you need to get as well as the space required. Uh, so yeah, so I don't think I'm going to make a tutorial on this one. I think I'm going to make a tutorial on the one I said earlier. Uh, but if you do want to build this one, if you have an excess of Insanite and you don't care about space efficiency, then literally all you have to do is, once the tutorial for that one comes out, uh, just expand it up by a couple blocks so that you can fit 32 blocks in instead of 16. Up next, I wanted to test out every single inductor block I could find, which was all of these. Uh, so, yep, some of these are from vanilla Minecraft, some of them are modded, but every single one of these blocks here can be used as an inductor within the turbine. Uh, obviously, Insanite's going to be the best because it's literally from Extreme Reactors, as well as requiring the previous tier of blocks in order to make it, but I thought just for the sake of thoroughness I would test all of them, and here are the results of that. So, as you can see, uh, like I said, Insanite comes out on top by quite a gigantic margin. Um, and the only other really uh, important thing to note here is that copper is, again, the worst, just like in the reactor, because if it rusts, then the turbine will completely shut down, and you'll have to kind of dig inside to find which uh, block of copper rusted, and you also cannot use wax blocks of copper because they don't work as an inductor. So, yep, uh, ModMaker, if you're watching this, I highly recommend making it uh, able so that if you wax copper then you can still use it or just make it so that weathered copper or oxidized copper can still be used but at a lower efficiency. So the final thing I wanted to address in this video is this comment by King Ali 555 and he wants to know what the biggest turbine he can make is and how much energy he can pump out of it. 
So I made this giant thing over here. So this is the biggest turbine you can make. It is 32 by 32 by 32. If you try to make it any bigger, the blocks won't kind of morph into the turbine. And if you right click on the turbine controller, it will tell you that the maximum size for a turbine is 32 by 32 by 32. So yep, this is the maximum you can make it. Uh, but unfortunately, this does not increase your power output at all. So the maximum it can spin is at the usual uh, 1800 RPM because the flow rate can only be as high as 2,000 millibuckets per tick. So if you could make this higher, then maybe this could uh, this could be the optimal turbine. Maybe you could pump out way more FE per tick. But currently as is, there's really no reason to build a turbine this size when it produces the exact same output as one of these turbines of a much, much smaller size. And finally, even though he didn't directly ask for it, I figured I would test what the biggest actual reactor you can make is. So I built this big guy right here and the dimensions are 32 by 48 by 32. So 32 in the XZ direction and then 48 in the Y direction. And you can see that it is producing about 22 million Fe per tick, which is pretty pathetic. I mean, those tiny turbines were producing almost 63 million Fe per tick and they were way smaller. So, yep, really no reason to build a reactor like this. Uh, the only reason maybe you would ever want to is so that you could produce a ton of steam for your turbines. Uh, but I would imagine this would produce enough steam for like a thousand turbines. So, I don't know, if you need a thousand turbines producing 63 million Fe per tick, then maybe you got bigger fish to fry than, <laughs> than making this reactor. But, yep, yeah, I think that's going to end today's video. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you guys next time.